Is the silver manipulation ending? And are we about to see silver at all-time highs? And coming in from Zero Hedge, Peter Hambro. BIS, central banks are rigging gold market using bullion banks' paper gold. Gold market rigging is done to hide the perception of inflation. Bullion banks do the dirty work for the central banks by manufacturing an unlimited supply of paper gold. But before we get to this piece and who is Peter Hambro and what's his family's background, I just want to share some other information with you. So if you watched my last video, you would have seen that I shared this chart that shows JP Morgan Chase and Citibank hold 90% of all gold and other precious metals derivatives held by all US banks. And there is a full article, which I'll put a link in the description below, which you can read, which goes through all the shenanigans happening there. But this has been one big frustrating thing for precious metals investors. And they've been screaming out to miners, why do you continue to play this game? Well, I saw this uh, email from a Fresneo um, investor. Now, for those who don't know, Fresneo is the largest silver producer in the world. I'm sure most of you know that. Anyway, hello, I'm a small shareholder in Fresneo and I'm very annoyed that Fresneo is willing, willingly allowing the silver price to be suppressed through the vast trading of undeliverable paper contracts, which results in the destruction of Fresneo shareholder value as silver prices fall lower and lower in a high inflation environment. A great many small silver mining shareholders on Twitter are depressed and angry about this lack of concern for their interests. I'm aware that First Majestic Silver and others have taken steps to try to counter the paper price manipulation by withholding physical production. I am deeply disappointed that Fresneo is not doing likewise. Yours sincerely. Now, a couple of things. One, I'm being told from silver miners that if they do this, then their share price will absolutely plummet and then you know they won't get their bonuses and you know all sorts of stuff now number two i've done a video about this uh when will silver hit a hundred dollars keith newmeyer from first majestic silver um talked about his plans and if you haven't watched this video i'll put a link in the description below because i'm talking about in this video what we're trying to do in australia as well so we are trying to support keith newmeyer and it would be great to see the whole silver industry come together, uh, the silver mining industry to come together, that is. So watch this space, but check out this video if you haven't yet watched it. So now I want to cut to a short little clip from a 2018 interview that uh, Mr. Christian did. So check out his words, check out his words, and listen carefully towards the end of uh, this clip. I don't think. But the fact of the matter is, excuse me, I'm in a, I'm in a building that has light se motion sensitive lights and it doesn't recognize what I do as human activity. Um, Those were your words, if, not anybody here. Yeah. No, actually they were my wife's. Precious metals are financial assets and like currencies and T-bills and T-bonds, they trade in the multiples of 100 times the underlying physical. And what are bullion banks hedging on the other side? Uh, we heard from the other panels, but you seem to be familiar. What are they? Yeah, is I it, mean, is it, Jeremy. Is it warehouse receipts? Is it, is it, is it, what, what is it? No, it's a tremendous number of things. Uh, you were at Goldman, I think, shortly after me. We had an MIS system that kicked out a so daily really bullion book. It's really because we, we, don't, we don't seem to have a lot of similar views, but, you know, it's a lot of people were at Goldman Sachs. Well, I, I didn't like the trends at Goldman, so I left in 86. Uh, but, no, honestly, and, and, and bad jokes aside, one of the things that the people who criticize the bullion banks and talk about this undue... Uh, large positions don't understand is the nature of the long positions in the physical market. And we don't help it. The CFTC, when it did its most recent report on, on silver, uh, used the term which we use in the market, the physical market. 
And we use that term, as did the CFTC in that report, to talk about the OTC market, forwards, OTC options, physical metal, and everything else. And people will say, well, there is, and you've heard it today, there's not that much physical metal out there. There isn't. But in the physical market, as the market uses that term, there is much more metal than that. There's 100 times what there is. And when we go forward, we expect gold and silver prices to rise sharply between now and, say, 2024. You know, probably to record prices by 2022, 2024 for both gold and silver. And the major reason that we say that is that we see investment demand rising, and we see investment demand rising because we see another financial crisis brewing on the horizon. So, yeah, Mr. Christian, now, like him or hate him, uh, he... He's an insider. He knows all the insiders. He knows what's really going on in the uh, silver market in particular. And towards the end of the video, you heard him say between 2022 and 2024 that he thinks we'll see record prices. That's all-time high prices for both silver and gold. So we're looking at $50 plus, according to Mr. Christian, in this next 12 to 24-month period, or probably 12 to 18 months where we are right now. Um, and he said it will come on the back of investment demand, which, to be fair, is true. That is what drives uh, the silver price. And it'll come because of a uh, financial crisis. Now, have a look at this chart. So this is current investors. They are still in risk on positions. They are still bullish. They Investors haven't woken up to the potential financial crisis that we're heading into because of the debt bubble that we're in, the, the, the household, corporate and sovereign debt bubble with rising interest rates and, and quantitative tightening. Uh, that is going to create a big issue because central banks will then get to a point where they've got to make a decision. Do they continue to do that and push us into the greatest deflationary depression the world's ever seen? And I actually mean those words. I'm not being, uh, I'm not exaggerating. Or do they go, oops, sorry, pause, reverse, bugger the dollar. And so we have stagflation, high inflation, and maybe down the track, hyperinflation. So, you know, investors are still in that bullish they're still buying options. Option buying is, is so high at the moment. They haven't yet seen you know what we're about to what we're about to face. What we're 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 in. We've started this very nasty situation economically and in financial markets. And people are going to learn a very big lesson. And you know, so watch this space. You know, we, we're seeing some indicators uh, that show that silver might be bottoming out here. And I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. But, you know, when this, this change from risk on to risk off hasn't happened yet. So watch this space. Now, there's another thing also before I share this next little clip is the US dollar. And we all think that the US dollar is going to collapse and it's going to die. But a lot of people think that it's going to die from weakness. Where you guys know my thoughts on the dollar milkshake theory, you guys know as an Australian, I hold US dollars as a percentage of my portfolio because it makes sense to me. What have we seen? We've seen the dollar strengthen. And when we really hit this liquidity problem, when we hit this financial crisis uh, problem, which is coming very soon, then I believe the US dollar is going to rise substantially compared to other currencies. And so, but that will be the death of it. The strength of the US dollar will be the death of it. And so I want to cut to this short little clip, little two minute clip with Rao Powell, Powell from. Real vision. Now, my opinions on Ra Raoul have changed over the last 12 months or so with him uh, pushing certain products that I think are just horrific and then him saying, 
that he never pushed them when he did because those products are now gone to you know what. So my respect for him has dropped somewhat. However, after this little clip, don't worry, we'll uh, we'll give him some uh, critiques on some other things. So check out this little clip from Rao. It's important that you know we listen to all sides of of the the, the coin. And so, you know, even though my respect for Rao has, has dropped somewhat, uh, I still listen to what he's got to say, just like Jeff Christian. I've got my opinion on him as well. I still listen to what he's got to say. We are in the dollar wrecking ball cycle where if we are not careful, we are going to repeat 1985 all over again, which is when we ended up into the Plaza Accord. So uh, I urge anybody to reread the book, The um, Alchemy of Finance by George Soros, because he keeps a trading diary of the whole period of 84 to 85, which was a very similar oil price, recession, blah, blah, blah. But the issue was the dollar. And the dollar backed off for a while as the Fed started cutting in 84, um, which was part of his big trade. His big trade was the bond market trade. The, the dollar backed off and then it rocketed higher, which is the kind of way that we see it now. There's a shortage of dollars. And if it rockets much higher, then we start breaking parity against the euro. We start, you know, the dollar yen started moving a lot. This is a bad setup. And there is a probability, and I don't think it's my base case, that we we have a real problem with the dollar. And in which case we end up with having to have some sort of plaza accord agreement, which is something we should be nervous of because that kind of agreement is not going to be with the US talking about reducing the dollar as much as others saying we need to move away from the dollar, which is something I've talked about for a long time. You know, one of the whole thesis behind the Bitcoin life raft video that many millions of people have seen is about this very situation of, of the, the strength and the dominance of the dollar. The, do, do, the US economy is 25% of the world's economy and 87% of every single trade transaction on earth. So it's everybody else's problem. And the world has kind of had enough of it. And a lot of people think the dollar dies from weakness, but I think the dollar dies from strength. So we need to be careful. These are very long-term charts I've been using, but if it plays out this way, then either in the next over the next 18 months, we get a shocking dollar move or we get respite again and it plays out in two years' time. But mm -hmm. it it's, feels like it's going to come one way or the other. Nothing can stop the dollar milkshake theory playing out. So it seems Rao is implying that it's now time to buy bonds. He says the best time to buy bonds is when the yield curve is inverted. However, Francis Hunt replies and says, I would argue never buy bonds at the end of a macro debt cycle in a hugely proliferated debt markets and unsound money everywhere, especially when quasi-Bolshevik organizations such as the World Economic Forum are actively planning the takedown of the legacy system, gold and silver physical. And Chris McIntosh from Capital Exploits also replies to Rao. He says, at the tail end of a super cycle in debt, this could at best be thought of as rather risky. At worst, it's easily the most catastrophic investment one can make. He emphasizes investment, not trade. All right, so let's get to this Zero Hedge article and why I think it's very, very important that you guys also read it in your own time. Now, the original piece was in reaction. Uh, Peter Hambro wrote this uh, article called Don't Forget the Golden Rule. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. However, I want to focus on the Zero Hedge article as it discusses who Peter Hambro and who his family are. So the article, which is titled Don't Forget the Golden Rule, Whoever Has the Gold Makes the Rules, which I just mentioned, is intriguing and eye-opening for a number of reasons chiefly because it pulls no punches in highlighting the price manipulation of the gold price and naming the types of entities responsible while explaining some of the mechanisms used in the fractional reserve london paper gold game but the article is also notable in terms of who the author is For those who don't know him peter hambro is a very well respected name in the gold space having co-founded and been chairman of the FTSE listed anglo-russian gold mining company peter hambro mining he was also, from 83 to 90, Deputy Managing Director of Legendary London Bullion Broker, Mokata and Goldsmith. Additionally, Peter Hambro's father, Everard Bingham Hambro, was also at one time a Director of Samuel Montagu, 
another of the legendary London bullion broker cartel firms. On top of being an insider bullion banker, Peter Hambro is also great, great grandson of Baron Carl Joachim Hambro, the founder of the famous English investment bank Hambro's. In fact, Makata and Goldsmith even merged with Hambro's bank in 1957. Such are the, their connections. In the 1980s, Makata and Goldsmith was also the largest gold and silver counterparty to the Soviet Union, a fact which helped Hambro establish Peter Hambro Mining in 1994. So when Peter Hambro writes about gold price manipulation, it is not just anyone writing about gold price manipulation. This is a man from one of the British banking dynasties who has been privy during his entire career to the inner workings of the workings of the old BMA and the establishment and who has the operational knowledge of running a London Stock Exchange listed gold mining company that extracts real physical gold, gold that has no counterparty risk and is no one else's liability. For those who aren't familiar with the news and podcast site Reaction, Reaction is a serious London-based publication run by heavyweight board of journalists and media executives which specialises in analysis and commentary on current affairs, politics, culture and economics. The trigger for Peter Hambro's article is a recent chart from the US Office of of the Comptroller of the Currency, which due to the data reclassification starting in Q1 2022, now shows a massive extent to which bullion banks such as JP Morgan have amassed precious metals derivatives contracts to hold down the price of gold. And as I said earlier, and even in uh, my last video where I shared this chart, there is an article that goes with this chart. So I'll put that in the link in the description below, you guys can read it in your own time, which I highly recommend you do. So the unallocated gold, the lid on the tinderbox. Hambro describes this manipulation of the gold price using derivatives as a tinderbox, which disinformation has for many years kept the lid on. But who, you might ask, is directing this disinformation and this gold price manipulation? Well, according to Hambro's bombshell, it's the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements in Switzerland i.e. the central bank's central bank. Ambro drops the bombshell that since 2018, the financial stability desks at the World Central Bank have followed the Bank for International Settlements instruction to hide the perception of inflation by rigging the gold market. But since the central banks need cover and cannot be seen to be rigging the gold price, Hambro continues, the only way to achieve the cover is by smashing the price of physical gold by the alchemical production of paper gold. If this has now got your attention, read on since Hambro elaborates. With the help of the futures markets and the connivance of the alchemists, the bullion traders, yes, that includes me, I was Deputy Managing Director of Makata and Goldsmith, managed to create an unshakable perception that ounces of gold credited to an account with a bank or bullion dealer were the same as the real thing. As much easier, old chap, you don't have to store it or insure it. And that's the selling point with unallocated, isn't it? That's, that's what it's sold as. The gold credit, which Hambro is referring to here, is the LBMA's infamous unallocated gold, with the futures markets being the COMEX. You might at this stage even think that Hambro has been reading the Bullion Star website since we have for years been explaining the very same thing. And what's wrong with gold? Well, there's that chart, and then Bullion Star says the correct answer, which the article fails to even mention, is that gold price discovery is based on the limitless creation and trading of synthetic paper derivatives, the LBMA, the LBMA unallocated and COMEX, in a system controlled by the LBMA bullion banks and sanctioned by the central banks. Gold price discovery is generated and controlled by the bullion banks trading unlimited quantities of unallocated gold, gold credit, minus synthetic derivatives, and COMEX golds, uh, gold futures contracts. The pricing problem equals the entire structural nature of this price discovery illusion. That the Bank for International Settlements and its governors are directing the world's central banks to rig the gold price shouldn't be a surprise, since that's the BIS has a long history of doing from the London gold pool of the 1960s to the new gold pool in the early 1980s. The BIS loves to rig the gold price. Why? 
because gold to central bankers is like the sun to vampires. And I talked about this in my last video. So pulling the strings, the Bank of England. In his article, Hambro goes on to explain the 1980s evolution of the London paper gold market and its many derivatives, which are the smoke and mirrors mechanisms through which the London gold market market pursues its fractional reserve paper gold scheme to this very day. Once investors swallowed this stupefying pill, it was easy to sell them gold that simply didn't exist. Of course, there were wary investors who found it hard to believe that the likes of Makata, Montague, Rothschild, and Sharps Pixley were undoubted counterparties and wanted to be assured that the gold would be there when they called for it. Easy, we said. Don't bother to pay for it. Just give us an initial cash margin and agree to a variation margin. Now paper promise is as good as gold. This was a simple derivative. If you thought the price would go down, you could sell us gold you didn't have and margin the trade in the same way. Then along came a raft of options and other products in the derivative market. For that is what this chimera was called, started to spiral like a tornado. A chimera being a mythical, monstrous hybrid creature composed of different parts, this exponential growth of in unallocated gold and gold derivatives first occurred during the period in the 1980s when Peter Hambro was a director at McCart and Goldsmith, and the London gold market consisted of a cartel of five bullion banks, namely N.M. Rothschild, McCart and Goldsmith, Samuel Montagu, Sharps and Pixley, and of course the infamous Johnson Mathy Bankers. It was Johnson Mathy Bankers which nearly collapsed in 1984 and had to be rescued by the Bank of England so as to prevent the implosion of the rest of the London Bullion Club. And as Hambro describes, the Bank of England was then, as of now, always ready to prop up the London paper gold Ponzi for some physical gold when needed in the form of central bank gold lending. To make the bogus gold look even safer, the Bank of England was quietly willing to lend the, gold, the London gold market members physical gold in the event that things got a bit tricky and our vaults were empty. When one of the members went bust, Johnson Mathy Bankers, the others clubbed together and with the Bank of England holding the ropes, the customers were bailed out. To that, you can add the Bank of England's manipulations in intervening into the, gold, into the London gold fixings in the 1980s, as documented in the Bullion Star article here. Then in 1987, the Bank of England took things one step further and instructed the bullion banks in London to formalise their cartel, which was done through the launch of the LBMA. And which is why to this day, the Bank of England and the LBMA are symbi sim symbiotically intertwined, especially through the ultra-secretive London gold lending market where, wherein central banks lend physical gold, the LBMA bullion banks physical gold, and the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia here, just came out not too long ago and said that our gold has been leased, uh, held by the Bank of England. Which is a subject that the investigative reporters of Bloomberg and Routers will never touch since the boards and editors of Bloomberg and Routers know that these gold lending operations prop up the entire paper gold fractional reserve scheme. In addition, this global paper gold scheme has limitless supply since, as Hambro puts it, governments and central banks and the BIS can print the margin, which is why Hambro says that the great banks of Wall Street will accept fiat dollars as margin and manufacture gold to swamp the market. While Peter Hambro has previously been known to understand and discuss gold price manipulation, his latest comments may be, the coming, now, may be coming now as he senses a geopolitical shift in the monetary role of gold. Besides, as the ongoing Western sanctions against Russia have decimated the ability of gold miner, uh, I'll let you guys work the pronunciation of that, to sell its gold and repay its loans as, it, as its main bank, uh, Gazprom Bank is sanctioned. Ambro, as a former chairman of, yep, I was about to have a try then, may have a better position than most in reading the uh, unintended consequences of sanctions on the global gold market. The paper gold emperor's close. Hambro then wraps up his article by referring back to the recent US OCC precious metals derivatives chart. 
Straws blowing in the wind are often said to presage great tempests, and I believe that this chart shows just such a straw. Look at this chart and then go see your bullion trading counterparty and buy some gold. Then ask for your gold or silver or platinum or palladium or any other physical store of value, medium of exchange that you have acquired to protect you from the ravages of inflation. For inflation will surely engulf the world when the paper gold emperor's clothes are seen for what they really are. Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping are among those who know the golden rule. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. Which also explains why Russia and China are now accelerating their interaction jointly developing the Russian and Chinese gold markets, as explained in this recent Bullion Star article. So there you go, guys. There's an article from Zero Hedge. But I'll also put a link in the description below to the original article that Peter himself wrote on reaction. I just thought uh, the Zero Hedge flesh fleshes out a little bit about who Peter Hambro is and his background and, and some of those things. And as Peter Hambro says, um, those who have the gold make the rules. And well, what are, what have we seen, especially the Chinese and Russian um, central banks do? Well, they've been accumulating gold. You can see this chart, 800 tons to 4,200. And that's of what we know of. Now, I've done some videos where some others have speculated about how many gold reserves that the two countries do have between them and i'll put a link in the description below to this uh video where some estimate that between china and russia they may own 54,000 tons of gold whatever it is uh they own a lot of gold now also if gold was just a pet rock and you know Whatever, why has Russia's state Duma, the lower house of parliament, passed a bill on the size of Russia's gold and foreign exchange reserves now being classified as state secrets? So now moving forward, we're not going to know what Russia and China's gold reserves are. Uh, yes, you, know, you can put it down to uh, the Western sanctions now being placed on Russia's gold, uh, but ultimately I think they've learned from China. You know what? Let's just say one thing and let's keep uh, keep the real numbers uh, classified. So this is the most uncertain period in my career uh, anyway. During the GFC, we knew what was happening. We knew what was coming. Dot-com bubble burst. We knew what was happening. Asset prices were falling. Uh, but now we've got geopolitical tensions. We've got wars, rumors of wars. Have a look at what happened to uh, the former prime minister in Japan, Shinzo Abe. The UK Prime Minister was forced to resign. We've got civil unrest just bubbling under the surface. Wait until Europe goes into winter this year. Uh, look at what's happening with the uh, Netherlands farmers, Germany, Italy. Look at Sri Lanka. That's now fallen. So I see a higher strengthening US dollar, the dollar milkshake theory playing out, which is going to create inflation, especially in emerging markets, and then a balance of payments payment crisis in emerging markets and yes we could then see some sort of plaza accord or Bretton woods agreement uh, 2.0 playing out but even brent johnson dollar milkshake theory man says the end game you want to own gold you want to own silver you want to own real assets that are not someone else's liability that has no counterparty risk so but this isn't the end of the story the next question now is the bottom in for silver or does it have more to fall? How high will the silver price go versus other assets? And how should investors play this? Or should I say, how am I playing this with a depressed silver price? So stay tuned for our next video where I'll share how I've been playing this falling silver price and why all the indicators and data that I'm seeing tell me that the bottom is in and is likely to run much higher over the next 12 to 24 months, as Mr. Jeff Christian said in this video. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut. And just a reminder, the information provided in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Nothing on this channel constitutes as financial advice. The information in this presentation is no substitute for financial advice, and all investors should seek advice from a licensed financial advisor having regard to your own objectives, financial situation, 
and needs 